a answer the question about if there were a law broken here, what would it have been? Well, a little hard to figure that out at the moment, although there has, at least uh, with regard to the meeting itself, it raises, as others have mentioned, the specter of whether or not you could consider what was being offered a form of an in-kind campaign contribution from a prohibited source, i.e. a foreign national. Yeah, to be clear, as I understand, there's a criminal statute that makes it a crime for a foreign national to contribute to a U.S. campaign, political campaign. Correct. And it's a felony. So it's serious. And do we know, does the law tell us whether information as opposed to cash can be something of value as a contribution? Well, technically the answer is that yes, it, it's not limited to cash, so therefore it would contemplate that it could also be an in-kind contribution. Uh, however, generally speaking, prosecutors have been careful and reluctant to prosecute cases based upon like, this sort of thing, information, because generally speaking, it's limited to the types of in-kind in campaign contributions that would be uh, deemed to be cash equivalents. For example, if somebody offered you office, you're a candidate for office, somebody offers you office space. Uh, that would be a prohibited uh, mm -hmm. campaign contribution, no different really than cash. Why? Because it's a cash equivalent. You can figure out what the fair market value is of the square footage of office space and say to yourself, well, wait a second, if uh, a foreign national can't contribute a bundle of cash, right. a foreign national also can't contribute free office space. Right. That would be a prohibited campaign contribution. Right. So in this instance, uh, Donald Trump Jr. says, and we have no reason to believe otherwise, that in fact he did not get value information, that he took the meeting, had the meeting, she showed up, she didn't give him anything. Does that take care of it from a prosecutor's point of view? Does that answer the question? Well, it doesn't completely take care of it, obviously, if, if things had followed through. And, you know, again, part of the investigation, which you would expect Bob Mueller to investigate, is to look for evidence of collusion, not limited to just simply this meeting, but whether there was any follow-up. And it raises the question about whether or not possibly other violations of law may have occurred more significantly if this conduct continued and there was further contact by Russian nationals with the campaign through the election and into the transition, obviously you have more significant questions that arise relative to collusion, i.e., if there were promises made uh, by the transition about what the administration would do once it took office in exchange for certain information, that would present obviously a very serious question under, as people have mentioned, the Logan Act, which prohibits uh, foreign policy conducted by someone other than the current administration or the current president of the United States.